Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. I'm a little distracted by what's going out on the lake this weekend. This is what my wife and I call Loud Boat Weekend. I don't know what uh, what Facebook group these guys are a part of, but they coordinate pretty much every year to uh, come back up here and usually it's like a 300 horse, 20 foot boat. And they rip, man. It's pretty, I'm not so old that I, I can't still get excited by that but welcome back this is a continuation of the custom ATC 70 build that we've been working on for Palin with Palin uh, when she can be out here I've just done some things it's a little hazy in here let me show you how I created a bunch of dust shop is a disaster so let's just get that out of the way um, as you remember, I cut that last 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 time, last week. Actually, it was this past Monday. And I figured while it was uh, short, that was the best opportunity for me to fit it in my blast cabinet and remove the paint and the rust. And I did that before lunch. And I'm going to drill... A hole here I'm gonna drill a hole there and marry it to the front which I've just finished all right now disclaimer not everybody is good at welding I am in that group and if you'll notice there's a lot of grinding <laughs> and a lot of spatter marks I was having to figure out why I was getting so much spatter and it, what I was researching see here's where I, I drilled the hole on the one side nope. and I'm on a, a really good table here because all my work surfaces are gummed up with this type of stuff but it kept telling me to slow my my feed speed down on MIG welding and I had it slowed down so much that I could watch it pulse in there and it would spatter so I raised it and that worked better for me, but this is this is an atrocious weld. Thankfully, it is going to be under the gas tank, and I'm going to sandblast this piece now. Well, it is short, and uh, then we're going to weld the other piece in. But that's where the geometry comes in. I got to make sure this is dead on when I tack it, because I don't want a little crooked crooked front end 70 but that's what we've been doing so far i'm gonna sandblast this and then i've gotta i'm gonna make a better workstation for me where i can actually get the frame in the right position to uh to weld wish me luck here i go Yeah, I know. It's atrocious. 
I'm really, tr I'm really trying to. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, I guess. But I'm gonna make it look like that in a minute. Here we go. Well, is not the prettiest, and I ground a lot. <laughs> um, the frame's definitely not perfect. It's got some chain issue there. Uh, I definitely ground things to make it look nicer. I don't know if I'll fill it with something to smooth it out so it doesn't show. I probably will. But I'm okay with this. I think it's plenty strong to uh, to do the job it needs to. But time will tell. Maybe it's not. But right now, I'm going to go get the original tank and the new tank because this is too high for the new tank. So I'm going to Find out what the difference in height is between tanks. And then move that lower or see where it needs to be. Because now we've added three inches, so this is back. If I put the new tank on, where does it fall? Those are some of the things we got to figure out now. So that's what I'm going to do now. Here we go. So last night, Palin and I mocked things up so we could see what it was going to look like. The shop continues to get worse and worse, so pay no attention to anything you see in the background, please. Loud Boat Weekend still continues, in case you haven't noticed the noise in the background. So this is the ape tank resting on the frame. I've had a block in there to... Uh, change the angle it will go a touch higher i've got to relocate the basically a cutoff bolt will work right where this web meets the tube that will be the perfect spot for that mount and i got to move the the rear kind of bracket portion forward just a touch and that's pretty much the extent of the fab. And then I can start painting, priming and painting the frame. I got to get the motor out of the box and just go over the componentry. I've got to do the forks. I'm going to do the top triple. I'll leave the, the bar clamps aluminum colored, but I'll hit them with my makeshift vapor hone. The, all the axle and the chain guard and the uh, the drum guard will be painted as well. I think we're going to do silver on the axle sleeves. I think silver on the rims. Frame color, I think we're going to make match the fenders. So, stay tuned. But now I gotta tear this back down so I could weld that stuff on the tank. So, I think I mentioned it before, but maybe I didn't. I've been out of town for work. So, we are at nine days, including today. That includes today, to work on. What started out as our 88 Big Red, which is thrown up all over the floor, but then we've had to push some things aside to work on Palin's 70. 
and I've just cut this out of I think a 12 millimeter M12 bolt which seems to be dead on with what that tube is so that tubes gonna get cut off and then ground flush this is gonna set in somewhere in here so I've got to make some decisions there try to mock up the the gas tank I've cut this this is two and three sixteenths long which is mildly arbitrary at this point it's narrow enough where I can get some rubber on either side but I had some rubbers off a of 90 I didn't have the tank rubbers off this machine or the one I tore down for Bennett and this actually seems smaller than than this I don't know if I can get new rubbers readily I didn't seem to have anything on hand I do have a a bin of rubbers uh, rubber grommets and apparently I can't zoom all right manual manual zoom all right that bin right there has all sorts of grommets and rubber things off of three wheelers but nothing that seemed to really fit the bill for this so at this point I need to make a decision I think I'm gonna pop the tank back on and try to eyeball where just confirm this makes sense my buddy Bart Bart Robert on Facebook he's in all the Honda groups if you've seen him he's got a bunch of minis he's the one who told me and showed me pictures of the one he did I just gotta make sure it's gonna line up so I'm gonna put that tank on and see if I can slide this in and where she falls okay let's see how that goes So I've had it mocked up and torn down twice today, but I'm pleased. So we moved this forward about five eighths. It might be close to three quarter. So my buddy Bart, when he mentioned that, he was right on the money because that's what worked. I want to grind that just a touch there. But this was back. It's hard to see where it was, but it was back about half its length. Uh, this weld still looks as good as it ever did. I feel like I've got enough in there that it's not a big deal. I welded this. This was an old motor mount bolt, bolt out of something I had in the drawer. I cut this off. I, I thought maybe I'd weld it, weld it in, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna leave it. I ground it down flush. So what I'm going to do now is stick this in the blast cabinet and try to just hit all the stuff I've ground down and put the, the sandblast finish on it. And then it's going to be ready for powder. Not powder. It's going to be ready for uh, primer. So that's all for right now. I'll show it to you when it's all gray primer. Well, today is Friday. <clears throat> Tomorrow is Saturday. The day after that is Sunday, which is known as Father's Day. I got Monday that I'll be here, and then Tuesday I leave for Trike Fest. So today, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days to get done what I need to get done. But I've got the support of my This Old Trike Insiders. Seven of you now. Ken, Jim, Matt, Andy, Neil, Jack, and Phil. Ken's my, my good buddy. I sold him a, a Grom. And he sold me a 73 ATC 70. Jim and I have been buying and selling from each other for a couple of years now. So he likes to buy things from me and then sell them back to me. So that's cool. Matt, I don't know if we've met. You got to comment and remind me if we have. Andy uh, and I have been chatting quite a bit uh, on Messenger. So 
swapping videos and stories. Neil, you've been a, a long time commenter on the channel and I appreciate all your views. Jack, I need to know, know more about you. And Phil, I met down at Binky's last fall. Very nice guy. What time is it? It is 6.18 in the morning. The crows are making their presence known. The fork set up and the pallet is there. I didn't record what I did yesterday morning because I left my recording phone at the house. I did snap a couple pictures so you can see them here. But based on the pictures, you'll notice a gap in the lineup on the wall of 70s. Was it the center one? Six over there, six over there. The centerpiece. Actually, the centerpiece was my worst 70. And you look at this and you go, oh, it's, it says 81. Yep, that makes sense. It was right there between the 1980 and the 82. And I pulled this down because I was not pleased with some of the rims that I was prepping for the pink 70, which hangs there. So this was to harvest a couple rims off this. I'm pretty confident at Trike Fest I can probably find some, some other rims or do, so, do something. But those ones are pretty rusted. Plus I needed the brake drum cover and I'll be able to find a new one of those, I'm sure. But in my process of reviewing this thing, oh, and I put the grab bar on it that I bought from from uh, Andy Nichols last year at Trike Fest. Thank you, Andy, for that. I noticed the sticker, the frame ID sticker, had been painted over. So I said, oh, the frame's been painted. <clears throat> and I bought this machine from my good buddy Mitch Rapucci from Maine. And this was probably three years ago. And he and Vinny were traveling around the world, the United States, wherever they were. And they were on a bit of a buying spree when they had their shipping company. And he acquired this. I needed an 81. I said, I want to buy it. He told me how much. I said, check your PayPal. And so I owned it. And, you know, it's got a pre-85 front fender. It's got the 81 tank. There it goes. Must be an 81. That's a little foreshadowing for you. One thing I did notice in all of this was it's got the handlebar clamps that have the ears for the bar pad and as you guys know because you all subscribe to my channel and you all watch my informative videos you know these didn't get a bar pad until 83 so surely somebody just swapped the top handlebar clamp mounts with ones from a 83 or newer but when I saw that sticker I got curious so I scrolled down here I scrolled down and I noticed immediately this is not how the layout of an 81 VIN and then I saw the F and then I thought F that's 85 that's an 85 VIN on my 81 you hear that? When I had my barn built, the guy said, do you want soffits? And for some reason I was like, no, I don't need soffits. Well, guess what? I need soffits. I got birds nests there. I got birds nests there. I'll have soffits later this summer. Okay, so 81 VIN. Check the serial number, which is down beneath the recoil, kind of behind there. 81 serial number on the motor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 85 VIN. 85 serial number on the motor. I basically got an 85 with an 81 tank and an 81 or some pre-85 year front fender. Palin's frame was an 81, but with the mods I had to do to it, that's not going to be a contender. We did tear down, Bennett and I, and I got video of it, but I don't think I put it into a 
a YouTube video for you yet. We tore down another 70 that turns out is an 81. That's how the VIN should sp is supposed to look for that year. So the B right there is indicative of 81. So that's an 81 frame. So that frame will go on that machine to make that a true 81. And uh, I put out some feelers, so maybe at Trike Fest I can find an 81 motor. Because 85 would be an upshift motor, right? Well, this morning... I am going to take this hole saw kit that I borrowed from work and I am going to drill a hole in my blast cabinet that I put a metering valve on to fix the, the flow problems and it has been working great but when you do that your, your feed tube is now external and you have to, a lot of guys have been putting one right here, a hole with a grommet to go up through so that's what I'm gonna be doing and I'm gonna set my phone down and do that now so I can get sandblasting because basically where we stand on Palin's build is I gotta get rims that I feel good about so I've got to tear down two other tires tear them down break break them down these tires and rims those rims are nicer I've got out of the three that I have harvested I've got at least one I'll feel good about I'll get them to be silver <sighs> gotta paint that brake drum cover I've got to get the motor out and mocked up that'll probably be tomorrow I've got some other bits and pieces I gotta throw some more paint on and that's where we stand with uh, with this build when we get all the parts painted I, t I took my battery to uh, a guy this week to have a battery box made. Pretty talented guy. Battery box and solenoid holder. So, pretty pumped about that. That'll hang from the grab bar. Um, I think that's it. It's a lot to do, but having the weekend will... Give me focus time. And if there's any time left over, I will be tidying up the shop. I have officially, and I don't think I've said this yet, I have officially given up on bringing the 88 to Trike Fest. So in case you haven't noticed that. I had to choose between me being disappointed about not having the 88 there or my daughter being disappointed because she didn't have her little custom pink 70. And I couldn't stand being disappointed at my daughter's disappointment. So, 88 will be finished post Trike Fest. It'll be there 2024, assuming we're all still here and not somewhere else. We'll say that. Don't want to make things. Don't want to share too much of what I really think, right? Got to keep it PG. Okay, but got to get to work. Let me see what we get done today, and uh, we'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Maybe tonight if something something sexy happens, but it's a lot of blasting and painting, so probably not. See you in a bit. <laughs> that's, the kind of, that's the kind of day we're having here. Oh, got the fan blowing. Creating a little draft because we are spraying primer. It's a rainy day outside, so we're spraying in in our room here, which was just recently really super duper cloudy. I've been sandblasting for a couple hours. It is a complete mess. I've been ironing out the kinks in my system here. I bought new blast media that was too coarse and I got this blast media and that's working well I've mixed the two that's about what it looks like I've got it everywhere 
Uh, I'm dealing with moisture. I've got one water separator, but I need to mount that permanently. I need to put a, a whole system water separator coming off the tank. I gotta listen to my buddy Curdy and get one of the pumps that will connect to that and automatically pump condensation out of my line, out of my tank. I have picked the best rims to use. I've got tubes on hand. I've got new O-rings on hand. Do I just go for the tube and assume they won't hold air? Do I use the O-rings and some bead sealer and hope for the best and not use a tube? I don't know. Up in this room I've got my 81 70 that I've harvested some parts off of. So this sits here. Uh, I think I'm going to take the foot pegs off of this since it's missing the rest of the heel guard and I'll probably round that corner over make it look intentional even though it is totally not intentional sandblast those give them a fresh coat of paint and then I think we're uh, we're down to assembly time I got the new bearings and seals in so I'll pull those off Pop them in. Today is Saturday. Tomorrow is Father's Day. My goal is to get all my painting done today. It's about 4 p.m. So that's a tall order if you've ever painted anything and you're just starting to spray primer. Tomorrow, Donnie Bizal is going to come up and he's going to help me with that 110. That's a giveaway machine. This is a giveaway machine for Honda Hoarders. Uh, what else? My 85 350X is going to Trike Fest. I've got to tighten the chain on that and just give her a once over. But that's pretty much ready to ride. Going to be bringing my 84 200E. Probably mentioned that already. I'm going to be bringing the 85 200ES again. Why not? 88's not coming. We mentioned that. Kalen is going to be riding this guy, so this can come. I'm going to bring her four-wheeler, too, just as a backup in case she doesn't feel comfortable for some reason. Better safe than sorry. i got some trailer prep to do, but that's really the gist of things. Um, I think that's all I'm bringing. Oh, and a fat cat. I'm going to bring my 86 fat cat, which is right here. So i got to make a path for that. I'll bring the fork boots that I got from Curdy. Do a Trike Fest install. Like, what is this? Is that bat guano? What is that? It's on the floor, too. Like, directly above this is boards. Is something crawling on that machine and pooping on it? What is going on? So that's where we stand. We're going to let this primer dry enough so I can flip these rims over and hit the other side. Flip everything over, hit the other side. So we'll probably give it an hour. I'll pull those foot pegs in the meantime. Oh. Oh yeah, I didn't. I haven't talked about these. So I'm putting a 110 motor on this, uh, on the 70 and it is electric start, fully auto. And there's a guy local who I just got introduced to the other day and he fabbed up a battery box. So I'm using a battery out of a TRX 90 and I hope that's big enough. Um, this holds the solenoid, so pretty excited about that. I got new um, tank rubbers because the other ones were non-existent. These are still available right from Honda. 
So there's the gaskets or the seals and bearings for the rear end. All right, guys, that's it for this very moment. Really need this thing to come together. But we'll check back in with you in a minute.